This quick tutorial will show you how your renders can go from this to an almost real photo with AI post-production. Hey everyone, Nunu here. In today's video, I've teamed up with Vasilis from VW Art Club, a popular Facebook group for 3D artists and architects. Of all the projects members sent us, this was the selected one. And you'll see all the steps we took to make it look real with AI. Let's dive in. We are going to use Magnific AI. There are two main features in this tool, Upscale and Style Transfer. One of the coolest features is called Upscale. With this, you can not only boost the resolution of your images, but also tweak various settings to add a dash of AI-driven creativity and make your image pop. Then there's something called Style Transfer, which is absolutely fascinating. This feature allows you to apply the style of any image into your own. Let's take a look at an example from Javi Lopez, one of the founders of Magnific AI. He started with a simple clay render and used the tool to transform it into a stunning, realistic image. It's amazing to see the transformation and just how much detail and life can be added with this tool. Just a heads up, like with any tool, there's no instant magic trick that makes everything look perfect. You will need to put in a bit of work on your renders to really bring out the best of them with AI. It's all about tweaking things here and there to get those amazing results. Just so you know, this process usually takes about five or six tries, each with different settings. After that, you will merge them all together in Photoshop to get the final look. It's a bit of a mix and match until you get it just right. Let's have a look at Lakshmi Nair project. We have two images available, the raw render and the clay render. In Magnific, we will start with the upscale. Here, we can load the raw render into the input image. I recommend having this image at a maximum resolution of 2K, or else you will be wasting too many credits. On the scale factor, leave it at two times. Then, for the optimized property, for renders, either leave it at standard or films and photography. Those are the best results. For the prompt, you can leave this blank for now, and then we can start to play with these settings. Just remember that you will never get the same results with AI, so it's always a little bit of experimenting and creating different generations to get the result just right. For this image, the creativity was left at zero. The creativity slider allows the AI to hallucinate additional details, achieving greater realism at the cost of moving further away from the original image. Be careful with this value. Really high values can lead to some pretty strange results. HDR was left at 2. This property increases the definition and detail of the image. But again, higher values can create some artifacts. Increasing the resemblance will make the generation closer to the original image, but very high values can give some artifacts. Lower values give more freedom to the generation at the cost of moving further away from the original image. So for this, it was used minus one. The fractality property, leave it at zero. A lower value here can result in less detail, but fewer glitches. And lastly, we have the engine property. For this, it was used the illusion. You can always play around with these settings and see what fits best for your image. And this is the first generation. Let's have a look at the before and after. Just with one generation, you can see a lot of improvements. The vegetation looks better. Have a look at this plant, for example. You can see more details and sharpness on it. And this type of generation, it's great if you want to keep everything exactly like you have on your raw render, but just give it a touch of realism. Now, for the second generation, it was used two on creativity, two on HDR, minus one on resemblance, and zero on fractality. And also, it was used a prompt this time. And it says, a hyper-realistic rendering of a modern house in a lush green forest. This was the result. But from this, it was only masked out the ceiling, which had better details. In the next round of edits, you will start seeing some really noticeable improvements in the image. We bumped up the creativity level to 5, which is pretty high, and it gives the AI more freedom to be creative. This is when things start getting exciting. The HDR was kept at 2, 
and the resemblance to minus 2, again to let the AI have more creativity. We'll also use the more detailed prompt this time around. Now, if you take a look at the Photoshop file, you can see the improvements in the vegetation. The plant at the bottom is now much sharper with higher details, and even the stone next to it looks much better. If I turn off all the layers from the previous generations, you can clearly see how each step has contributed to enhancing the final result. In the next generation, things start to get a bit wild. Creativity was cranked up to 8, and that really let the AI go wild, to the point where it started adding houses in the trees. But it's not all the unexpected outcomes. There are some useful elements too. For instance, the leaves on the trees came out better, so we can mask and keep those. And the vegetation by the water improved too, so we are incorporating that in this generation. Then, moving on to the following generation, the creativity was toned down a bit, with a value of 3, and we zeroed out HDR, resemblance and fractality. This time the focus was more on refining specific parts, like the glass and the foreground vegetation, to enhance the detail and texture there. You can really notice how the reflected vegetation on the glass has become sharper and more detailed now. It's these small touches that really enhance the overall image and make the details pop. And finally, this latest generation is where we saw a major shift thanks to the use of style transfer. The raw render was used as a reference and the clay version of the render served as the input image. After a few iterations, we arrived at the final result from the style transfer. You'll notice that many aspects look quite different from the original image. However, the goal here is to use these tools to enhance and refine the final result, pulling out the details and textures that weren't as pronounced before. So it's all about tweaking and enhancing to get that perfect finish. So looking again into the Photoshop file, we can see that only some areas were used from the image. The foreground with the water, pebbles and vegetation, now it's richer. Some of the vegetation on the right side was also replaced and to add depth to the image, the window in the background was opened and now you can see some chairs and the vegetation in the distance. Elements like this allow you to play with the depth of the image, making it more interesting. Another addition that wasn't in the original image is the metal sheet on the roof, which was introduced during the style transfer process. From there, it was just a matter of fine-tuning the image, addressing small areas here and there, like adjusting parts of the image or extending the metal sheet further along the roof. These tweaks help polish the final look, ensuring everything blended well and enhanced the overall visual appeal. So, as you can see, it evolved from this raw render to the final image we have now. It's a process that might take up to an hour if you go through several generations and then move on to the style transfer. But this investment in time can really pay off by significantly improving the final image. It's all about layering these techniques to enhance and refine the visuals. And did you notice the texture repetition here? This was actually kept on purpose to maintain that subtle 3D feel. And what do you think about this workflow and the general use of AI in the architecture and design process? Drop a comment below if you'd like to see more videos like this one. You can also check out another video where I show how I use AI for design and architecture. And that's all for today. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and I'll see you in the next one.